Partially submerged under the Shikov Reservoir is one of the most advanced transportation projects ever undertaken during this war-torn period. It's 330 feet high, 72 feet wide, and is made of reinforced concrete. If you could take away the millions of gallons of water beneath it, the whole structure becomes clear. But as it is now, you can't see any of that. It's a hidden gem. But why was this mysterious bridge built? And why was it abandoned? In 1939, Hitler's engineers are working to develop a vast new road system to unite every corner of the so-called Third Reich, which includes the entire country of Czechoslovakia. And its new freeways, known as Autobahns, reflect the new optimism of the country. But in order to carry people and goods from rural areas of Czechoslovakia to its capital city, Prague, and onto Berlin, engineers begin constructing this. The Borovsko Bridge, also known as Hitler's Bridge. The bridge, of course, was known as Hitler's Bridge. It was to form a vital part of what was going to be the central European highway. And this is really his vision, not just of melding together the disparate parts of the empire he's creating, but also its military use and the speed with which troops can actually move down this road to whichever part of the Reich is threatened. There was undoubtedly more to Hitler's autobahn than just getting from A to B. It was all about national pride. It was all about, wow, look at this audacious autobahn that we're going to take the vehicles that are going to communicate with the Reich and make us leaders of the entire known world. It was all about dominating. That's what Hitler's autobahns were. And its dimensions are simply mind-blowing. In the time when it was built, Czechoslovakia was one of very few countries in the world uh, that planned to build highways that wide. The width of the bridge is 22 meters. It's divided in two bridges. On each bridge, there should be two lanes for the traffic. The bridge spans across the Shihov Valley, near the village of Borovsko. It rises to 330 feet in height, with a single arch spanning the stream below. Workers labor constantly for what's hailed as the future of engineering. They started the construction of the bridge in 1939. They built most of the load-bearing structure by 1942. The original project counted on 800 workers to be here on the construction site, but in reality, they got just 150 men. There were some delays in the construction, but still they managed to complete the whole load-bearing structure in two years. But then the engineers face a problem. To maintain the speed of the autobahns, the new bridge must be built with a tilted surface. It was a straight bridge, but at the same time, behind the bridge there should be a curve. So this is why the bridge leans to the right side. The bridge was designed for the speed of the vehicles, like 160 kilometers per hour, to reduce the effects of the forces acting on the cars you need to design the bridge a little bit skew. It's not a reason of some settlement in the foundation. It is how it should be. Not only that, but Germany demands that this new motorway and its bridges be finished by 1943. Despite shortages of labor, equipment, and even cement, the engineers at Borovsko used the latest techniques for their bridge. If you do strip away all the surroundings and you can see the structure of the bridge, it's a reinforced concrete arch bridge, which is a very common type of bridge. But again, this was being built in the 1930s. Especially reinforced concrete was not a common used material for that kind of structure at this time. So it just goes to show how forward thinking and how advanced Czechoslovakia was in their infrastructure technology. But in July 1941, 
Hitler launches an unexpected invasion of the Soviet Union, and most public works are canceled across Czechoslovakia. Thousands of tons of concrete that were originally planned for road and bridge construction are diverted to the war effort to create vast defensive systems. But because the Borovsko Bridge is so important, the work here continues. Here, we're using a new material in a way that has real structural integrity in an arch bridge, making intricate shapes, intricate forms. That was groundbreaking. That was pushing technology to the, to the boundaries at the time. But then, history plays its hand. In May 1942, the hated Nazi overlord in charge of much of occupied Czechoslovakia, the so-called blonde beast, Reinhard Heydrich, is assassinated by members of the Czech resistance. The assassination of Reinhard Heydrich, a member of Hitler's inner circle, sent a shockwave into the Reich that they were not invincible. In fact, they were vulnerable. In this time, the communists were leading our country, and they focused more on the heavy industry, and the heavy industry preferred railways uh, to, to motorways. So as a result, the highway leading to uh, the Hitler's bridge was never built, and it's just standing here. So why was the bridge flooded? With the nearby capital of Prague growing exponentially, Czech authorities transformed the Sedliki River into a water reservoir in 1976, nearly submerging the Borovsko Bridge in its entirety. Of course, the cover layer of the concrete is deteriorated, but it's still standing here. It's under the water. In fact, it was not designed to be flooded in water, and still it's, uh, you know, I would say, uh, quite a good shape. So, yeah, they did a the good work. Today, Hitler's bridge lies neglected and abandoned. Hitler's abandoned bridge is a poetic, symbolic testament to the technology of the Nazis. You have this living, breathing example of Nazi architecture. In fact, Nazi ambition. It needs to remain as a reminder and as an example of what misguided people are capable of getting up to.